What's happening guys? I'm Jack Domingo and today I'm going to talk about how you can acquire a firearm license here in Namibia. Um, as you guys have seen lately how the robberies have been in the country, it's been crazy. In Venduk especially. Every other day you hear there's been a robbery. Every single day you hear there's been a robbery. So it's just important that each and every one of us, responsible citizens, arm ourselves in order for us to defend our lives and our properties. So just a disclaimer guys, this video is based off of my experience in acquiring a firearm license in Namibia. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. <laughs> Let us get into it. What's happening guys and welcome again back to my channel. I know it's been a long time since I have posted anything on this channel at all, but I have been very busy. I've been swamped doing back to backs work between my work, my career in filmmaking, uh, doing police work. So I haven't really had any time, but let's cut to the chase. So in this video, I'm going to discuss what you need to become a gun owner here in Namibia. Okay, so basically guys, before you can get your firearm license, let me just make it clear for everybody out there. Getting a firearm license and getting a driving license are two different things. With a driving license, you can borrow a friend's car, you can get your parents' car, and then you can go and do your driver's test and pass, and then you get a driver's license. With the firearm license, it's totally and completely different. You will need a firearm, first of all, a registered firearm with a serial number. Then you will need a certified copy of your ID. You will need two passport photos. So one passport photo will go in, in your firearm license book. This is basically how the book looks like. That's how the firearm license book like. It's written Namibian police force with the Namibian police board badge. Firearm license note identification book. Guys, why are we still getting books for identification purposes? Haven't we moved over to court? Ministry of Home Affairs, Immigration, Safety and Security. Why can you not provide us with books? Anyways, they're going to put your passport photo in your in your license book right here you're gonna put it in there just to identify that you are the owner of your license and then you will need a motivational letter you need to state you need to have a motivation as to why you need to own a firearm it's very important guys to mention the crime stats in your area where you live in the town you live in the suburb township wherever you live mention the crime stats in that mention the motivation what is it that you're why is it that you want a firearm like? If you have been robbed before, include those case register numbers in your motivation letters here that you have been robbed before or somebody you know have been robbed before with whom you usually hang out have been robbed before. Mention all of that and why you need a firearm license. And then um, you will need a $50 revenue stamp which you can get from NEM Post. You will need to have a safe that is safely mounted somewhere in your house. A safe where you can store your pistol when you're not using it or your firearm when you're not using it. So, just a recap on the requirements you need. You need a firearm, you need a certified copy of your ID, you need two passport photos, you need to have a $50 revenue stamp which you can get from NEM Post, and then a motivational letter, and also a safe to save your pistol when you're not using it, or your firearm when you're not using it. So those are the requirements that you need before applying for a firearm license. So once you have, once you have collected all these documents, you'll have to go to the nearest police station from where you live. Say for instance you live in Gemiente in Shandumbala, Damara Lokasi, or you live somewhere in Dolam. Your nearest police station would be Katutura police station. If you're living in areas like Herero location, uh, you're living in Freedom Square, Police Camp, your nearest police station would also be Katutura police station. If you're living in Vanaeda, you're living in Hakahana, Havana, Korea Hub Dam, um, Greenwell, your nearest police station would be Vanaida police station. If you are living in areas like Windhoek West, Windhoek North, you are living in the CBD, you are living in town, those guys report to Windhoek police station. If you are living in Eros, in Aves, Ludwigsdorp, Klein Windhoek, those guys report to Klein Windhoek police station. So each jurisdiction has got their police station where you have to go to. So depending on where you stay, you go to your nearest police station and then you start the application process. So once you get to the police station and you, have, and you have all these documents, what they will do is they will take your fingerprints and then you will fill out an application form and then they will send it to forensics for background checks. Let's get into the thick of it, guys. I bought my firearm in November, end of November, 2021. 
and I got my firearm license in at the end of January, close to the end of January. That's why I got it, which is very weird and very surprising because these things usually take between four and six months, but I got mine in two months. I'm not sure. Maybe they did not have a lot of applications that they needed to process during that period of time. But usually for first time gun owners, you wait between four and six months. It also takes longer sometimes depending on how complicated your application is or how complicated your issue is with the law. That's so it. once you purchase a firearm from a gun dealer, um, there's no refund. So even if your application has been declined, you'll have to write another letter to appeal. and to, You have to explain to them or you know you have to tell them why you think that your, their declination of your application has been unfair or misplaced or misjudged. And you have to motivate as well why you need to have a firearm again. And then if you, if say for instance your, your application is still being processed, you've already paid for your firearm at, your, at the gun dealer, and something came up, an emergency, or you just want to cancel, you just feel like you don't need, or you're moving out of the country, or you just, you, anything, anything, whatever comes up and you, you, you don't want the firearm anymore. What you need to do, what that they'll do is, you can still go back to your gun dealership. However, I haven't met any gun dealer that charges less than 20% handling fee or cancellation fee when you're canceling it. Um, outdoor center charges 25%, Security World in Marua Mall charges 25%, and some other shops, not less than 20%. So that's it from from buying the firearm and going to the police station and all that. So this is what happens while they are doing it. I just wish Namibia had a competency test that they are doing like, like they are doing in South Africa. So in South Africa, getting a firearm license is not as simple as it is here in Namibia. In Namibia, in my experience, I haven't had, I did not have to go through all the trouble of having to be tested, going to the hospital, proving that I am mentally fit, I don't have anger management issues. They don't do that. There is no competency test in Namibia and I just wish they can introduce competency testing because there are people here in Namibia that have anger management issues. They are very angry and you're arming these people with weapons and they're going to potentially harm or kill another person or even hurt an animal. And it's bad to hurt animals. <laughs> According to the Arms and Ammunition Amendment Act of 2019, which was originally amended from the Arms and Ammunition Act of 1996, these are the requirements by the law in order for you to be a gun owner here in Namibia. The first and important thing is you need to be a Namibian citizen or you need to be a holder of a valid permanent resident permit in Namibia. You must be 18 years or older unless you are a public servant as contemplated in section 1 of the Public Service Act 13 of 1995. <sighs> Guys, this constitution. The other thing is you must be mentally fit as well. Ne? You must be mentally fit. You must not have a record of mental illness or you have an alleged mental illness. You also must not be dependent on medication that has an intoxicating or narcotic effect on your mental health. You must not have been convicted of any crime inside or outside of Namibia. That means you must not have been involved in any sexual offenses, mishandling of firearms, illegal possessioning of firearms, drug dealings, violent crimes. If you are sentenced to prison without the option of a fine, they are not going to approve your firearm license. I'm not, I'm not sure how they are going to determine whether you don't suffer from any mental illness or whether you are not dependent on, you know, medication that has a narcotic effect on you. That's what they are saying in the Arms and Ammunition Amendment Act of 2019. So I'm not sure how they determine that because from my experience, I did not have to do all this. I did, I did not have to prove that I am mentally fit. I don't have anger management issues. I've never been involved in any altercation that's, uh, that's against the law, illegal altercation, illegal stuff like that i did not have to go through maybe others have gone through that in namibia but i haven't had to go through that i'm just gonna do a recap now of everything we've discussed in this video you need a firearm before you can apply for a firearm license you need two passport photos of yourself you need a certified copy of your id you need to have a 50 dollar revenue stamp from them post and then they are going to take fingerprints your fingerprints at the at your nearest police station and you must also have a safe where you can store your firearm for safekeeping when you're not using it. 
uh, those are the requirements for you to apply for a firearm license and then the other requirements from the arms and ammunition amendment act of 2019 you must be a namibian citizen or you must be a permanent resident in namibia or holder of a permanent resident permit in namibia you must be 18 years and older unless you are a member of a public servant as contemplated in the public service act 13 of 20 of 1995 um you must uh, not have been convicted of any criminal offenses inside or outside of Namibia and uh, you must be mentally fit as well. You must be mentally fit and you must not be dependent on any medication or drugs that have an intoxicating or narcotic effect on you. So those are, the, those are basically all the, the requirements um, for you to own a firearm here in Namibia. Let me just walk you guys through quickly what's in the fire, firearm license book. So important information says here, yeah, report within 48 hours when an arm or ammunition in the possession of license holder is lost, stolen or destroyed at the nearest police station. Take responsible steps to ensure the safekeeping of arms and ammunition when not carried on person. Any person having an arm in his or her possession shall at all times have his or her actual possession of license or, author or other authority to possess the arm and shall produce the license or other authority immediately at the, at the request of a police officer. So whenever you leave the house with your firearm, you have to carry this with you. This is like, it's like your phone, guys. Most of you I know, you guys cannot leave the house without your phone. So whenever you're carrying a firearm, have this available. Because if the police catch you in the street, if your firearm and you do not present a valid firearm license book, it's going to be confiscated and you'll have to prove that that, that firearm is licensed. They are also going to keep you at the police station for possession of illegal firearm until you present proof that the, the firearm has been registered. Also, if the police find you with a firearm, even if you have your firearm on you and you are intoxicated or you are under narcotic effect, they are going to confiscate your firearm and it's going to be very hard to get it back. Um, so that's on the front page. That's on the front page. That's what's written there. And then on the second page right here is where they will put your passport photo and then your registration number of your firearm book, your name, your identification number, or your passport or your permit number, and then your signature down there. You are going to, you, know, you will sign this book once your thing has been approved. On the next page is where the important details of your firearm comes. So on this page uh, is where your, the registration number, which is your, 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 the same as the registration number, registration number of your firearm license book will be there. The make of your firearm, so like in my case, I have a Glock 19. Uh, just see, guys, the firearm is safe. There's not nothing in the round here. Look away, check, put your finger in, make sure it's safe. Point it in a safe direction, squeeze the trigger, it's safe. So I got the Glock 19. And on my Glock 19, the serial number is there on the barrel and also on the slide. That's where the serial number is. If you check under here on the chassis itself, you'll also see that there's also a serial number. So the serial number is practically all over this pistol. On the slide, on the barrel, and also under on the chassis. That's where the serial number is. So that same serial number that's on your firearm is the same serial number that's on your firearm license. Because once the police ask you, they find you with a firearm on the street or wherever, and they ask you to present this book. They are gonna check the, the, the make of the, the the make of your firearm. And they are gonna check the serial number to see if it matches. And if it does not match, if you've landed yourself in really hot waters. And then, okay, the serial number. And then again, they are gonna put your name on the book, the same name that's on your ID card. And then the type of piece, uh, firearm that you have. In my case, this is a nine millimeter pistol. They are also gonna put down the caliber. The caliber is also just down there. Uh, in my case, this is a 9mm Parabellum 9x19 millimeter um, caliber. And then the license number is down there. And then the signature from the Inspector General. Also another thing guys, if you are living in Namibia, you are only allowed to own one type of caliber firearm. What I mean is, you cannot have two 9mm calibers. You need to have a different caliber. So you can also only own up to four different firearms in Namibia. Nothing more than four, unless you are part of a bona fide group, which is basically you guys who are doing shooting sports or who are gun dealers, who are hunters and stuff. So you can have, so here you see for each firearm, there is like a little, 
they paste the license in this little book. So you have your 9mm around here, you have a rifle here, you can have an AK-47 rifle, you can have a hunting rifle here and maybe a smaller caliber or a shotgun rifle also in the same book. So you can only have up to 4 firearms. And then if you want a different firearm, you'll have to surrender one or sell one of the firearms so you can make space for that. You can only have four firearms. Anybody that has more than four firearms is either part of a bona fide group, community, or they are illegally having that firearm. So that's how the book looks like. This is the book that you will get once your firearm license has been approved. Okay, so that's it. Um, the other thing I also want to mention, guys, is ammunition. When I first got my firearm license, I got a box of ammunition of 50 rounds for 350 Namibian dollars. That was early March. $350. And I got it from a shop called Namib Arms in Swag of Moons. These were, they were the Winchester firearm ammunition. They were the Winchester rounds. And they were the beginning of March. They were $350. I went to Swakop Moon, I think, early March, the first week of March. Prices just went up $50 more. And they were $400. I got this box of 50 rounds for $400 million. And then the war between Russia and Ukraine broke out. Rounds became very scarce to find. The dealers were struggling to get rounds into the country. And finally, when the rounds came, I got these Luger rounds for $660 Namibian dollars. $600. Guys, how do we go from $300 to $600? That's double the price for ammunition. I use my, 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 my rounds sparingly and I stock up whenever there's stock available in the country because oftentimes you call one gun shop and they say they're out of stock. It's more likely that all the other um, gun dealers will also be out of stock. So just make sure you stock up, stock up, get yourself ammunition, get yourself enough rounds, practice, practice, practice this it's very important so personally I got the Glock 19 just want to make sure that the firearm is safe check there's no round look away look back check there is nothing point the gun in a safe direction pull the trigger it's empty the gun is safe I got the Glock 19 Gen 5 initially I wanted to buy the when I first went to, to, the, to the gun shop in Prosperity Arends I saw a cold a 1911 9mm pistol, it was really long, metallic, heavy, and I told my cousin, it was 14000 at the time, apparently it was on sale for $14,000. My cousin was like, nah, bro, don't buy this. And I was like, dude, the thing is beautiful, I want it. He said, check the Glocks. I went to check the Glocks, it was very blocky. As you can see, the Glock is very blocky. I did not like how it looks like. Eventually, the Glocks shape just grew on me, and I just love it. It's a very beautiful gun. Semi-automatic pistol, that means that once you cock, you shoot, it charges another round in the chamber. That's what a semi-automatic means. You don't have to cock all the time. I have learned how to shoot this pistol in under a month, under a week actually. I've learned how to assemble and disassemble it in less than five minutes. Five seconds, five minutes. This is the spring. This is not a Glock review. I'm just showing you what I'm currently carrying. And this is your barrel, yes. So the serial number is on there, the serial number is on there, and this is your slide. The Glock is a very simple firearm, very simple to maintain, very simple to shoot, very simple to break apart and put back again. And put it back again. I can do it in my sleep now, I know how to handle it. So if they are going to introduce the competency test where you are being tested whether you know how to handle your firearm, I can confidently say that I can put it back, I can break it down and put it back safely so when i bought my glock i got two magazines with it i was supposed to get three but i'm not complaining because i got this glock for a very good price initial price of this was sixteen thousand hundred and something or 500 something and i got it for like two thousand dollars less and i got two magazines with it you can't buy rounds. so when you're buying when you're applying for your firearm license you cannot buy bullets you cannot buy rounds yet your up your application must first be approved so whenever you're buying rounds you need to take a firearm license book with so that they can register those rounds under your name straight and clear so that's it guys so some of the shops that i recommend you guys looking at is outdoor center Arends. outdoor center is in metro city just behind growth mall 
Aaron's is in Prosperita. I don't know which street, but the street name is. I know exactly where it is. It's a bit difficult to explain where it is. Pro Central Guns, they are behind Hours Valley. No, shopping center. Shopping center. Hours Valley Shopping Center. That's where they are. You can also check with Security World in Marua Mall. However, those guys are very expensive. When you're buying your firearm, make sure you get a holster. Do not carry felony. With the Glock, the Glock does not have any safety mechanism on. So once you cock this Glock, when you pull the trigger, it goes bang. With the 1911, it has a safety. You cock it, you first need to remove the safety and then you press the trigger. I've seen most of the people buy firearm like, and they don't, they cock it and they put it in. So guys, once you put this, I see many guys like carrying appendix. So once you put your firearm in here and there's any obstruction here, and it pulls the trigger, blow your junk off. So just get a just get a nice, reliable, ideally a hard um, holster because there are some leather ones, some really flimsy ones that are made out of cloth that are not really safe. So how I carry is usually I carry appendix. That is what you call appendix. I have my firearm. I can walk around. Nobody knows I'm armed. I don't, I'm not a fan of carrying appendix. I usually carry it here when I'm in my car. So when I'm in the car, this is where I usually carry it. Or when I'm walking in, you know, like a neighborhood I'm not familiar with or some dodgy neighborhood, wherever I am. But when I'm at work, I know we're not allowed to bring any firearms to work. I put it on my left side. This is like, I feel like this is like the best place I can conceal it. Because the butt of the gun is facing to the front, not the back. So I can just easily conceal it on this side. There are many ways to conceal a firearm, guys. There is no right or wrong way. As long as you can, as long as you can quickly get to your firearm when you need it. It's not a problem. Take it out, cock, boom, go bang. Or, this is like the fastest you can easily draw your firearm from, from your appendix. So some people like carrying it with a round in the chamber. I do carry sometimes with one in the chamber, not all the time. Carrying with one in the chamber is basically just, you know, in case of emergency, you take it out, point and shoot. If you don't have one in the, like I don't carry with one in the chamber. I've practiced on how to draw it quickly. Take it out, cock, and then bam, it go bang. That's how I carry it. So guys, that's it for this video. Uh, I know it was supposed to be a very short video. Initially, I wanted to make this a very short video. It's not not as simple as I thought it would be. I just want to say shout out to Rian Afrikaner who has been pushing me to make this video. He's been asking me a lot of questions. He is very keen on carrying as well. I have a couple of friends. I know a few friends who also want to carry. Shout out to Pe